Hey guys, Vigoman here and welcome back to another episode from Rovitz. For this episode I have built three more buildings and we're starting off with the first one which is the water mill. The water mill is one of the bigger buildings in Rovitz and it's placed exactly at the end of the main street through the village here. It was a super fun building to do, trying to do the mechanics of the wheel and interior and just trying to make it feel realistic. It is also attached to a small house for the Miller's family. And the next building for today's episode is the Butcher, which is built right next to the church. It is built in a slope, which means that we have access to a little basement as well, which is really convenient where the Butcher can store stuff uh, below his main house. There's also a little shed here for storing meats and drying and uh, all that kind of stuff, uh, and a workplace outside to do the butchering. And then we are at the last building for today, which is a tanner, which is conveniently placed a little bit outside the village, because from what I've heard, it really smells. I'm really enjoying the process of researching how medieval people would be doing uh, products and work as the tanner here, just trying to figure out how to the best way possible and realistically possible uh, represent that in Minecraft is just such a fun task. So let's start with the first building for today. Uh, this is the water mill as you saw. I've been doing a little bit more work, landscaping and stuff surrounding this. That kind of goes for everything. I've been adding some farms and fields uh, and trees surrounding this place and just tying stuff together as we go kind of. And eventually all this is going to be beautifully landscaped. I really like this house, how it kind of lays low. I, I feel like it lays low, it's not really that low though. but. Yeah, it looks cool, uh, and as I mentioned, it's in the end of the street here, so once you kind of walk down the main street to Rovitz, uh, you get straight to the mill, uh, and like uh, there's a junction here, you go this way or that way, but there's also a little path uh, where uh, the miller just takes a quick detour, or not a shortcut I guess, yeah, it's just a quick shortcut to get to the mill, which is uh, around here. And then inside here and I've been re researching I've been trying to figure out how to properly uh, show off the me mechanisms of a water mill uh, so actually let let me show you the actual wheel outside first uh, since we have these beams we can make these really cool looking uh, mills like that uh, so we have that uh, I need to waterlog those let's get to that since we're already here if not I will forget uh, so let's just do... Can I not word log that? Oh no. I was pretty sure I could. Anyway. Um, yes, yeah, so we have this mil uh, water wheel outside here, which where the river flows this way, this would turn around. Uh, and then on the inside here we have... Uh, it, yeah, the, the bar coming through here. And then we have another wheel which pushes this wheel, or like, almost like a cog I guess. And it's kind of carved out of the ground here where it goes around. And then this one turns around. Then up here we have uh, like uh, the mechanisms for grinding the flour or the wheat into flour. So you put the wheat up in here. It uh, Stuff happens in here and in this barrel here or collection area we will have we uh, flour. So you can put it into baskets like that. Uh, which is uh, pretty cool. And then we have this little uh, vinch system I guess. Uh, to yeah, simply raise and lower baskets of grain, of uh, either up with um, hay or down with uh, flour like that. So I'm very happy with this, and it's such a fun job to just uh, research and figure out how to do that, and it really helps you being creative as a builder because. Uh, yeah, it's not really ma made to do that kind of technical stuff, but uh, you'll always find a way if you just uh, tinker around hard enough. In here we have the house for the Millers, or the Millers family. Um, so uh, we have like some areas to sit and stuff like that. We have a little uh, loft up there. We have a fireplace or an oven, I guess, to heat food and stuff. A little kitchen solution here. And then there's a hallway here, which I really, really like. It's, uh, um, yeah, it has access to a little um, pantry here for food, which is really convenient because you need that. And then uh, uh, another like storage area for tools, more and clothings and all the other kind of stuff you might want to store. 
And then it's just like a little hallway here. It's decorated nicely. Really like that. Um, and then there's a staircase going upstairs to uh, this section here where we have the beds. So here we have these cute boots. Look at them. <laughs> I really like them. And then we have... Um, yeah, the bigger bed here with a pretty nice view overlooking the tanner over there, uh, which we're going to check out in just a second. Uh, so yeah, that is like the top area for the miller um, here. So let's go out this door and check out, or actually, yeah, let's go out this door. Uh, like that, uh, to this part here. I'm also very happy with this little landscaping part right here because there is a little stair to get to the other side of the mill here um, very yeah conveniently placed I guess but it's not like the the main road into the mill but I just really like the way this pathing system is done here because it's not really using pathing blocks it's just kind of indicating that people are walking here uh, and kind of forming a path over time but it's not uh, so oftenly used that um, it's dirt so yeah, there's like mossy or grassy dirt patches here and then you can see the vegetation kind of um, lowers towards the path you see that on both sides here uh, and it looks really realistic I think and it makes sense that uh, if you want to go this way you take this path and if you want to go this way you take this path so we have like a little junction there um, small bit like that is uh, is always what kind of gets me into uh, or just yeah, where I waste too much time on building. But that, that are fun things, right? <laughs> uh, here we have the butcher. And as I mentioned, it's built on a little slope here. Uh, I love when you can do that, have different elevations, different planes of building. It's right next to the church here, and which is convenient if you have to uh, offer something in church. I don't know. Like a goat or something. Uh, but in here we have a little storage area basically. And there's actually hanging a big animal here. Which is kind of drying out. So maybe like a big pig or something they slaughtered. And they're just drying it for blood in here. Um, and yeah. Wondering. Yeah let's go this way. Uh, wondering what way to go. Uh, and this way just go straight to the back area for uh, the butcher here. So we have this little shed uh, right there. Very small, but it's storing meats, hanging uh, up stuff for drying, and here we just have like a big pile, uh, just re yeah, newly restocked bit of just meat and intestines, I think, I don't know. Um, so that's the little shell over there. Uh, and then outside here we have, yeah, of course, like personal stuff, like drying racks and stuff. But we have... Um, this one, I saw this from Kingdom Come Deliverance, which is, as you know, one of the main inspirations for this place. Uh, and there was a butcher just kind of built in a little slope on a little wooden platform. I just thought it was super nice. So I decided to go ahead and do that myself. It's just like a little area here to chop chop, make uh, sausages and beefs and stuff. Uh, and then actually there's a little, uh, f yeah, enclosure for a pig or something in the back here. Which would be very scary to be that pig just sitting here looking at what's happening over there. But uh, yeah, let's not pretend that pigs understand that, okay? Um, and then there's some wonderful trees happening over here. Uh, one of you guys suggested that I do a tree repo. I have done that. Thank you so much for that idea. It saved me a lot of time uh, when doing today's episode. And it's going to probably save me more time as we go. Because the more trees I build, the more trees I have. And I'm thinking of maybe releasing that uh, repo. Uh, for the trees eventually maybe to all of you or maybe to my patrons. I will have to think about that Let's check out the interior of the butcher here uh, Through that door right there And we're inside there's a little shop for selling the stuffs selling the sausages and uh, rabbits and you know the meat in here Very nice uh, and you can go straight back to the outside here like so and then in here we can get into the living quarters for the family. So uh, we have a kitchen here, uh, creative design of a fireplace uh, here. Um, I think it's pretty cool. Cool. And then we have yeah the kitchen cupboards and stuff, seating areas, and decorational furniture like that. I guess you could um, store some stuff in there as well. Then there's a staircase going upstairs to the top floor where the parents and kids are sleeping and yeah 
not too much to look at in here, I think. So let's go back out and check out the final building for today, which is the Tanner, uh, which is right over there, conveniently placed, as mentioned. It's a, yeah, the further furthest out uh, you get in the village here. So the Tanner is built, yeah, completely on diagonal, 45 degree, uh, which again just uh, helps make the village feel alive. Uh, and it, of course, the road is going on that angle, so it makes sense to do, build this house like that. As you can see, it's just kind of following the river here, so that makes a lot of sense in my mind, at least. Let's check out the outside here first. So in the back here, um, we have the area to do the tanning or where the tanner works. So we have a little uh, shade area here to work below. And this one is, uh, I'm not entirely sure what it's called, but you use it to stretch the hide or the leather. So you just kind of stand here and put the leather over it and then uh, use some kind of tool to stretch it or yeah, smooth it out, I think. Um, I saw that in the references when I was doing research. So I put that in there and then just a lot of uh, bigger, yeah, troughs or uh, so yeah, I guess tubs, I don't know, uh, for water and different kind of um, stuff you use to treat the leather. So you'd wash it and I think you would uh, put like some oil on it maybe and acid and, and stuff to prepare it and um, yeah, to work with it. Uh, also added a little uh, forest in the back here um, with a little leaning tree there which is pretty cool, and some spruces and a little oak tree there, and it's actually a little birch as well in the back. This one is probably one of my favorite trees I've done. Anyway, uh, there's also a little shed right here. So here we have just storing some leather and tools and all that jazz you need for doing the tanner job. All right, uh, let's check out the interior of the tanner as well. So you can go in from the back here, but let's go in from the front. I feel like that maybe makes the most sense. So we have this main entrance here. And we go straight into the kitchen or living room thingy. Uh, where we have a big oven here. Almost look like a kiln, actually. Uh, and then some seating areas. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. In here we have the little, uh, yeah, hallway, I guess. Uh, Nothing too much happening here, uh, but it takes us into the master bedroom or the bedroom, I guess. Uh, we have a big bed here, uh, some seating areas. Maybe this will be the living room. It's common that uh, the parents slept in the living room back in the days. So that is kind of what we have here, this little room. And then there's a ladder going upstairs uh, where we have some storage and also a little bit of a patch for sleeping in. Maybe they have um, someone, um, yeah, like a trainee or something here, um, or maybe it's the kids, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, a little area to sleep up here as well. And that is pretty much it. Oh, it's really hard to get down here. Uh, pretty much it for the Tanner and all the other buildings for today. Uh, as you can see, we have a lot of new fields uh, and three more buildings. And I'm really happy with the way it looks. Look how nicely this looks on the map. Uh, and yeah, it's going to look awesome. In the next episode, I want to work on this yellow thing. I'm not going to spoil too much more than that. Uh, but if you have paid attention, you might know what it is. But guys, thank you so much for watching. Really hope that you enjoyed. If so, make sure to smack that like button. And if you haven't done already, make sure to subscribe. It's been Vigoman, and I'm out.